Hello and welcome to today's Nutrition Insight hosted webinar. I'm Elizabeth Green, the moderator for the webinar from Genosis by La Safra today. I'm a senior journalist for CNS Media. Now, before we get started, I'd like to let our listeners know that you can submit any questions you wish to be answered through the Q&A engagement tool. Any questions that we don't have time to respond to during today's session can be answered via email following the presentation. The webinar will also be available on demand on nutritioninsight.com. A link to view the on-demand webinar will be emailed to you after the presentation. As mentioned, today's webinar is presented by Genosis by La Safra, a key player in human nutrition and health. The webinar is entitled, Why Quatrifolic is the Folate Blockbuster. Folate stas status is a crucial aspect of women's health at reproductive age, but that, that's not its only advantage. There are plenty of other market opportunities that proper folate offers. Folate, the water-soluble vitamin B9 found in various foods such as leafy greens, fruits and brewer's yeast, includes chemically similar compounds essential in rapid cell growth and division for maintaining new cells and making DNA and RNA. The term folate and folic acid are often mistaken and used interchangeably, sometimes causing confusion. Recent data suggests the need to distinguish between natural folates and synthetic folic acid. As such, metafolate or 5-MTHF has been evaluated as a better alternative to folic acid supplementation. Quatrifolic, the 5-MTHF glucosamine salt by, of Genosis by La Safra, is an ideal choice for consumers seeking folate solutions. Notably, folate deficiency is widespread, even after the fortification of foods with synthetic folic acid in some countries. Recommended for preconception and pregnancy support, folate supplementation also supports fertility, cardiovascular health, mood, and cognition. With that, let me introduce our speakers today. Our first speaker is Sylvia Pizzoni, Senior Global Manager at Genosis by La Safra. Sylvia is responsible for operational marketing and reproduction and women's health market segment. She has a master's degree in pharmaceutical science at the Department of Biomedical Sciences for Health at Milano University. Our second speaker is Luca Tiano, Professor of Nutrigenetic and Nutrigenomic at the Polytechnic University of Marsh in Italy. Luca teaches nutrigenetic and nutrigenomic and coordinates research activities in the lab of oxidative stress and aging with a focus on bioavailability and biological effects of vitamins in nutritional supplements and functional foods. Luca is also a board member of the European Society of Comparative Biochemistry and Physiology. With introductions complete, let's begin today's webinar. I will hand it over to Sylvia. Sylvia, the floor is yours. Hi to everybody. We'll start uh, uh, with uh, an overview of the market uh, of uh, folate. So the folate global market overview. What are the key facts about folate? First of all, the fact that folate uh, are a mandatory vitamin. That means that they are recommended as very important, as essential for pregnancy more or less worldwide. Is, uh, uh, use is uh, already accepted in mostly every country and uh, uh, as uh, introduced before from Elizabeth, uh, uh, folic acid is the historically old-fashioned folate form. Uh, in the past year, we saw in the market a strong switch from folic acid into the active form of folate and this is really a strong trend. This also was linked to the new benefits that are related to high levels of folate in the bloodstream. If we want to have a picture of how much active folate supplements are growing fast, we can see uh, how, much new, how much new folate products are into the market. 
So we, uh, if we give an index of the new supplement launches, we see that we have around 75% increase of active folate launches into the uh, global nutritional supplement market. This growth is absolutely faster if we compare it with the new launch of uh, uh, active folate and folic acid. What does it mean? It means that uh, uh, products in the market claim more often active folate than just vitamin B9. And this is because uh, uh, customers are looking for innovation. And so uh, innovation is related to the fact that the old fashioned folic acid and the global vitamin B9 will be substituted by active uh, folate. The trend is very strong and we have a huge growth on the reduced or active folate market. If we want to, to have a look of what are the top subcategory in terms of percentage of the supplement, when uh, we talk about folic acid plus active folate, we see that we mostly talk about vitamin and min minerals and 10% uh, about women's specialty. Then we have benefit uh, with some kind of product with uh, botanical and herbal supplement. And uh, if you want to, to see where these products are used, uh, they are often using energy and uh, stamina. So everything related to energy and wellness, of course, you immune health and uh, uh, the big market of uh, brain uh, mood health. Uh, another aspect of vitamin B9 is related to bone health and also related with the skin. If you want just to take a picture of the market of active folate, so not only globally speaking vitamin B9, but take a look of what is the market of active folate, we saw that uh, active folate is more common in the specialty. So if for the global B9 market, the women health is about 10%, for active folate, we are around 16%. So active folate as quadrifolic seems more important to be focused on specific need and benefits. So we are a little bit more far away the global vitamin market that is absolutely generic and go more deeply into specific benefit. And also we are very strong in the same health target that was related to energy, to women's health, especially pregnancy, brain and mood and immune health. A last picture to understand the fastest growing positioning track at the supplement launch, launched with active folate, we have mental equity and we grow around 129% bone health, skin health, and of course, the big market of folate that is related to pregnancy and breastfeeding. Also, diabetes is a good field for folate application. Uh, we have a lot of example of product launch, uh, launched in 2021 or 2022 that are really related to brain health and uh, for quadrifolic because these are products that uh, as uh, quadrifolic inside is a, a good source of folate for all the need related to red blood cell formation but also mental function and mood taking a look of where there is a strong trend for active folate uh, the two main countries are north america and europe here, the process of changing from folic acid to reduced folate, active folate is really, really fast, but also Asia Pacific is a good market. But of course, the main trend sector are Europe and North America. If we want to give a global and fast focus on supplement with quadrifolic ingredient, we are, of course, very strong in pregnancy. We have here an example of a blockbuster product in Italy where they just substitute folic acid with quadrifolic. And with this substitution, the product is actually the main cell, the best seller in pregnancy and prenatal into the Italian market. Of course, pregnancy is a key uh, product, uh, is a 
pre-positioning also for US, and we still have a lot of launches of product for preconception into the US market. Fertility is another key aspect, and also here we have example of a product that help fertility also controlling homocysteine level. But these are not the only um, positioning of uh, quadrifolic and active folate. We are already present in immunity. We are uh, already present for mental function and mood, and also for all the problems related with anemia. All these products were launched around 2022, and our new product launched this year into the market. Uh, last application, of course, is related to energy. We know also that uh, folate, uh, active folate, as a claim approved for uh, energy improvement, cognitive health uh, with uh, mind care protection and uh, increased uh, cognitive function, and of course, uh, stamina uh, uh, approach with uh, product related to increased longevity and uh, better health. Uh, now uh, we are going a little bit more deep into science, and so I leave the floor to Professor Luca Tiano that will uh, give an introduction about folate and uh, explain the different form of folate and application. Thank you, Silvia. <clears throat> so mm, through this presentation, I will describe more of uh, quaterfolic, the most innovative form of folates. In particular, we will speak about the difference with other type of dietary folates, and we'll go through its benefit for health as supported by science. Folate together with other B-complex vitamins are essential molecules for the maintenance of cellular function and health, and in particular, they play a key role in the biosynthesis of vital elements such as DNA, lipids, proteins, neurotransmitters, and as such, they are particularly important during pregnancy and lactation, but not only, also uh, in general to the wider population. So, uh, being a vitamin, our organism cannot produce folate, so we rely on the diet for our needs. And folate are present in different vegetable sources. Uh, here are some examples, such as uh, greeny leafy vegetables, uh, broccoli and other brassicace, fruits, uh, such as avocado, papaya, oranges, legumes, nuts. However, there are limitations associated with the intake of folate with vegetables. They are associated to the variability of folate content depending on cultivar, season, but more importantly, storage and cooking. That might decrease the folate content up to 70 or 90%, even 95%. Uh, besides the variability and unstable content in food, there might be issues uh, related to the subject-specific variability in folate requirements. Uh, and this might be uh, increased in certain phases of life, um, <clears throat> but uh, that are not uh, uh, associated with an adequate increase in dietary intake. Other subject-specific differences may reflect the, the difficulties in absorbing folates, the use of drugs that interfere with its metabolism. Notably, dietary folate does not come in the active form, but needs to be transformed by the organism. And the functionality of activating enzymes may vary considerably from person to person. Uh, for all these reasons, dietary intake, on average, is generally referred as inadequate for organism requirements, and individual requirements may vary within the population in relation to the phase of life and in relation to their genetic background. In particular, the major enzyme, <clears throat> the major enzymatic protein that converts the uh, the folates, dietary folates to reduce folate is methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. When we look at the genes that encode for this protein, we can observe frequent variation in the sequences that this variants uh, um, of, uh, of the gene sequence. And these variants are called polymorphism. 
that may translate in different health risk factors in relation to uh, required folate uh, intake, as we are going to discuss soon. In particular, it is important to pay attention to the difference between natural folates, uh, the one present in the dietary sources that we just discussed, um, and uh, that are a family of naturally structurally related compounds, uh, and uh, synthetic folic acid, which is a compound that is widely used in supplements and in uh, food fortification, and was first synthesized in 1945, <clears throat> uh, but is uh, um, very different from uh, the bioactive uh, form of folate. Uh, both the dietary folates, in fact, and the folic, synthetic folic acids um, that, that can represent the usual dietary sources are not the form of folates that our organism uses as cofactors. Both of them, they need to be transformed to the 6S5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is the only biological form of folate. Quadrifolic is actually bioidentical to 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, making it immediately available for the organism in its active form. In particular, when it is mostly needed, and that means uh, uh, during pregnancy, for example. Uh, here, that in order to convert into this natural form, uh, the, uh, the the dietary folates and even more the synthetic folic acid has to undergo several act activation steps that we see here. And notably the use of folic acid has been associated with plasma level of uh, unmetabolized folic acid. So when we use the synthetic folic acid, we are not able to convert all of it, but some of it remains unmetabolized and is found in the plasma. <clears throat> um, what does it mean? Um, uh, unmetabolized, uh, unmetabolized folic acid, the plasma level, have been reported in significant amounts in subjects taking as low as 200 micrograms per day of synthetic folic acid. The fact that these levels were uh, associated with detrimental health effects um, is a particular concern, in particular in countries where systematic fortification of foods with synthetic folic acid is a standard procedure. <clears throat> Health concerns related to unmetabolized folic acid refer mainly to interference with the immune system, decreasing its ability to eliminate malignant cells, providing an environment more favorable to tumor development. Quadrifolic, not requiring an enzymatic activation, results completely safe. It does not lead to any unmetabolite uh, folic acid accumulation in blood. This led to clear indication by the scientific community to replace synthetic folate with methyl tetrahydrofolate in supplements. This, um, this concern is uh, particularly true in subjects with defective folate reducing ability, subjects bearing specific gene variants, also known as polymorphism, as we just introduced them, which do not constitute a disease state, but an expression of human genome variability. <clears throat> What is actually a polymorphism? A polymorphism is a variant in the DNA sequence that characterizes each single individual. Sequences of DNA are composed by building blocks, also known as nucleotides, that come in four types and their sequence constitutes the genetic code, just like the musical note composed a melody. In our DNA, we can say that is written our personal melody of life, which is pretty similar in each one of us, with the exception of some scattered single notes uh, that represent the gene variants. This variation may sound, uh, uh, normally they don't have any effect. Sometimes they even sound as a personal glimpse of interpretation and they make better the original script, but uh, sometimes they may be clearly out of tune and they make our life uh, melody of life, uh, not uh, uh, so good. <clears throat> so 
getting back uh, uh, to methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase, the enzyme necessary for the metabolization and activation of folate and folic acid, it has been reported up to nine polymorphisms, uh, and among them, two uh, variants are particularly common, uh, the 677CT and 1298AC, uh, and different combination of these two variants result in the expression of low functionality enzyme with activities that may be as low as 25% compared to the wild type form. Um, so this G, uh, gene variants is important to note that are not a rare condition. It is an, being estimated that uh, about 60% of the people could uh, present a risk of folate deficiency based on this genetic uh, uh, lower um, ability of reducing dietary folates. Um, so it is a it is a very common uh, uh, aspect. <clears throat> Folates represent uh, a critical step, as we say, the, in the biosynthetic process. Uh, this. Mm, cycles where folates are involved is also known as one carbon metabolism, which is vital for the biosynthesis of DNA, protein, lipids, uh, and other uh, critical biomolecules. And alteration of these processes are clearly linked to the pathologies such as vascular diseases, cancer, organ failure, and neurodegeneration. <clears throat> and uh, this very basic function supported several uh, EFSA claim, stressing its critical role in human health, such as beneficial effect in contributing to normal psychological function, normal function of the immune system, reduce fatigue, uh, normal cell division, and this is particularly critical during pregnancy, so maternal tissue growth during pregnancy, uh, normal biosynthesis of molecules. Um, and moreover, it is also involved in methionine biosynthesis, and doing that, it recycles a potentially dangerous molecule known as homocysteine. Therefore, folates are critical to maintain low level of homocysteines through appropriate recycle of this molecule to methionine in collaboration. This happens in collaboration with vitamin B12. Uh, uh, this reaction is catalyzed by methionine synthase that uses methyl tetrahydrofolate as a cofactor, and it's important because it contributes to maintain homocysteine levels low. Indeed, its accumulation is linked with increased oxidative stress that may link it to pregnancy complication, uh, infertile age, but also in general, it may be linked to several degenerative diseases such as atherosclerosis, stroke, diabetes, osteoporosis, uh, cognitive impairment. Uh, homocysteine plasma levels should be around 10 micromoles per liter, but they increase with folate deficiency. Supplementation with folate is able to reverse it, and this aspect, uh, in this respect, uh, recent studies have shown that quadrifolic is remarkably more effective than synthetic folic acid in lowering homocysteine if we consider that it produces a better effect with 400 micro grams of 5-methyl uh, tetrahydrofolate compared to 5 milligrams of folic, uh, synthetic folic acid. And it's always uh, in a B a vitamin complex uh, formula. Um, during pregnancy, folate uh, is of uttermost importance because of the high proliferative and biosynthetic rate of, um, of the fetus. Uh, and as described, uh, um, helps controlling homocysteine level was accumulation is casually linked with the recurrent embryo losses and gestational issues such as neural tube defects. Um, but even before pregnancy, deficit of biosynthesis and oxidative stress promoted by hyperhomocysteinemia uh, may be responsible for fertility issues, which constitute a worldwide health concern that interests about 15% of reproductive age couples uh, and interests not only females, but both males and females. 
Female fertility may be compromised following ovarian development, oocyte development, fertilization competence, pre-implantation development and, uh, and implantation, and of course, fetal growth. In this process, folate play a critical role in ensuring an optimal DNA methylation and integrity while retaining low homocysteine level. But fertility is not only a female problem, uh, folate deficiency may affect also male reproductive ability, and folates are essential in spermatogenesis, uh, deficiency, and its deficiency is associated with a decrease in sperm count and quality. All of these conditions may be clearly promoted and worsen it uh, in presence of methyl um, tetraidofolate reductase, this low activity variance. Um, going to the results, uh, uh, an interesting trial evaluated the role of folate in lowering homocysteine in infertile couples uh, in this respect. In particular, the study involved 89 couples with an history of infertility and miscarriages um, that had at least one copy of the low functionality variant of, of methyl tetraidofolate reductase. Not surprisingly, homocysteine levels were uh, higher than 10 micromoles uh, in the subjects, in particular when the variants uh, were present in two copies in homozygosity. Um, but treatment with 600 micrograms uh, of quaterfolic in a big complex formula was able to uh, rapidly normalize homocysteine levels in all subjects within safety levels. Even more interesting for the final outcome is the effect of intervention considering uh, reproduction, uh, reproductive outcome. In this trial uh, that involved 33 couples with at least one partner with methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase polymorphism with an history of infertility, premature fetal loss and miscarriages, uh, it was tested 5-methyl um, tetrahydrofolate. Notably, these couples had previously used high doses of uh, folic acid, up to 5 milligrams per day, but without success. When the couples were given quarter folic 800 micrograms per day, the pregnancy rate increased to a stunning 87%, either spontaneous or maximizing the effect of in vitro fertilization and embryo transfer. Uh, in this respect, uh, it is uh, interesting to notice that uh, hyper uh, homocysteine that we discussed, besides its detrimental role in reproduction, represents a common determinator that interests the senescence process, cardiovascular, neurological dysfunction, and highlights the beneficial role of folates uh, to achieve a successful and healthy aging. Um, uh, Hyperhomocysteinemia induces cellular damage both directly, supporting oxidative stress and endothelial dysfunction, and in, also indirectly as a trigger of uh, atherosclerosis. So an optimal folate intake is able to curb these uh, delete, deleterious effects. But again, subject with uh, uh, methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase polymorphism are particularly at risk and synthetic folic acid supplementation may be insufficient to, uh, for adequate protection in subjects with this bearing this low functionality variant. As shown by this very interesting Chinese study that highlights that in a very big population, we are talking about 20,000 subjects that were at risk of stroke, synthetic folic acid was effective only uh, in uh, uh, those subjects with the wild type uh, uh, methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase gene, but not in subjects bearing the low functionality variants. <clears throat> In post-fertile phase, uh, in general, talking about uh, 
sign sense. Uh, folate has been shown also useful in lowering menopausal symptoms in women, together with the discussed support uh, uh, at cardiovascular level. Folate may support also, uh, in general, other aspects of women's health that is affected by senescence, like bone regeneration, um, which is important in the prevention of osteoporosis, of particular concern in this uh, women phase of life. Finally, menopause may be associated with common discomforting symptoms such as flushing, sweating, accelerated pulse, and this may have variable intensity manifestation leading to insomnia, fatigue, as well as memory and concentration problems. Folate has been shown to be effective in delaying and minimizing this effect with efficacy comparable to hormone replacement therapy uh, by interacting with monoamine neurotransmitters in the brain. Notably, quaterfolic permeability across the brain brain blood-brain barrier uh, is essential for, um, represent an essential feature in this particular action. Finally, let me add some further technical advantages of methyl tetrahydrofolate uh, present in, in quadrifolic. We discuss its readily availability, bioequivalence to the active form and its unique properties just now of passing through the blood-brain barrier. Um, Methyl tetrahydrofolate in quaterfolic uh, comes as glucosamine salt uh, that is particularly soluble in water and therefore is more bioavailable than calcium salt uh, and is about uh, 100 times more soluble and, and bioavailable as it is confirmed by these uh, pharmacokinetic studies that I'm going to show. Um, it is a classical PK study. We can evaluate the peak plasma value following supplementation of similar amounts of uh, synthetic folic acid or different uh, glucosamine salt and calcium salt. Uh, we see a peak in the plasma after one hour and folic acid is the lowest um, and quaterfolic, quaterfolic as glucosamine salt is about 20% higher than the calcium salt form. Um, also in terms of uh, area under the curve, so if we do not measure only the peak, but the entire time within the, uh, eight hours, uh, quaterfolic uh, shows a better bioavailability, which is approximately 10% higher than uh, calcium salt. <clears throat> In conclusion, we have discussed that folates are essential dietary elements uh, that are required in biosynthetic processes, and such they are critical in reproductive biology from enhancing fertility to enabling a healthy gestation. Subjects with meta, um, methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase gene variants with low activity uh, variant may be at risk as shown in several papers and their optimal choice uh, of uh, supplementation is methyl tetrahydrofolate, 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate as glucosamine salt. Uh, but this indication is not limited to the reproductive phase of life since folates are essential for ensuring optimal protection from age-related degenerative diseases also. <clears throat> so we can conclude that the quaterfolic is an innovative and effective supplement for all stages of life. For more information, please visit the website uh, on the quaterfolic uh, uh, website. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you to both Luca and Sylvia for this insightful presentation. This is Elizabeth Green once again from Nutrition Insights and I'll now host a Q&A session with our listeners and our speakers. Some great questions have already been sent in, so thank you in advance. So to kick off with our first question, the question from a listener is, what is the difference between PK parameters for quatrifolic with those for folic acid and how is quatrifolic absorbed Maybe, Luca, you're the best person to answer this question. Over to you. Uh, thank you. Yes, we, we just went over this topic uh, and I want to stress as quaterfolic uh, results to be 10 
percent approximately more bioavailable than the calcium salt uh, and around 20 percent more uh, bioavailable than the folic acid uh, as uh, recently published um, in uh, preclinical trials using uh, uh, marine models uh, in particular rats uh, mm -hmm. lately the prince uh, langehorn uh, and collaborators in 2009 mm -hmm have indicated that uh, 5-methyltetrahydrofolate calcium salt is more effective at increasing plasma folate uh, compared with folic acid in a short-term protocol uh, with single oral dose application uh, in the physiological range irrespective of the particular genotype. <clears throat> of uh, the methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. In aqueous media, such as gastrointestinal fluids, uh, I like to remark uh, that uh, the dissolution and dissociation of quaterfolic uh, and its uh, chemical components is very fast. And uh, this makes it very uh, easily absorbed uh, more absorbed than the calcium salt uh, by mucosal cells uh, and facilitate uh, their, its access to the blood. Yeah, if I can add, uh, solubility is really a key point. Uh, quaterfolic, so the glucosamine salt is around five times more soluble than the calcium salt. Uh, and uh, this is something that is already affected uh, uh, also from uh, EFSA opinion. And uh, so this is important because the, the peak uh, of absorption is uh, faster in comparison with the other calcium salt. And this will impact, of course, also the availability. Thank you to both Sylvia and Luca for that answer. That was really interesting. So our second question now um, is from a listener. The question is, what are the main methods to evaluate the bioavailability of folate and or 5-MTHF in the blood? Yeah, I think Luca is the expert because uh, it's one of the technicians in terms of evaluation bioavailability for a lot of activities. Oh, thank reasons. you, Steve. Yeah, well, yeah, this uh, procedure we normally do in uh, this, uh, it's very important to uh, it, this relates also to my previous question to uh, estimate the amount of uh, active that really gets to the organism. So it's important to measure it. Uh, the easiest uh, tissue uh, that we can measure it in is, of course, in blood. And both serum and uh, red blood cells folate uh, content uh, are established methods uh, in clinical laboratories uh, to measure the, the, the folate content. Uh, also for, for the clinical point of view to estimate a potential deficiency. So red blood cells folate concentration are more uh, reflective of folate tissue status compared to the serum folate and represent the vitamin status at the time the red blood cells were synthesized. So also through a period of time. So uh, uh, red blood cells, they last in the blood for a longer time. So we have like a, an idea of the amount of folate that is present more like um, over a span of time. Um, uh, while uh, serum and plasma folate reflect uh, recent dietary intake. Uh, does this method is suggested to evaluate, uh, uh, is used to evaluate the bioavailability of folate after supplementation. So we can uh, use red blood cells to uh, evaluate by the certain deficiency of the organism, whereas we can use plasma or serum folate to evaluate uh, uh, the, the, the rapid response following uh, oral ingestion. Um, Serum folate generally gave the greater response. I was able to distinguish different supplementation doses as I have shown in my data. So that, that these are the parameters that are normally using pharmacokinetic assessment. Thank you, Luca. That's really interesting. Very detailed there for our listener as well. So our next question in our Q&A is, why do we find folic acid in so many government recommendations and supplement ingredient lists? Sylvia, I'm going to put this question forward to yourself, if that's OK. OK, this is, uh, and we can say the situation is evolving faster. So folic acid is uh, 
the long used form and cheaper form and uh, because we know that folate are absolutely mandatory in pregnancy and uh, folate deficiency vitamin b9 deficiency is probably one of the most common vitamin deficiency worldwide and it's related to high level of healthy problem especially in pregnancy there are uh, uh, more or less around 80 countries uh, that uh, in their national program uh, use uh, food fortification uh, to prevent neuronal tube defect uh, with folic acid. So folic acid uh, is common. Uh, what is happening right now that the clinical investigation suggests uh, the fact that uh, uh, folic acid uh, work, uh, but not with the 100% of the population. And so uh, there are already some countries that suggest and highlight the opportunity to use uh, methyl tetrahydrofolate or reduced folate as a best option, especially in uh, population with polymorphism. And also there is the big um, debate about uh, the risk of an unmetabolized folic acid as explained from uh, Luca, the fact that uh, if you use a lot of folic acid, but you are not able, able to metabolize it, this could be found into the blood as unmetabolized folic acid. So it's a really an ongoing process. And we already have some uh, countries that start to highlight the importance of reduced folate. But uh, we are at the beginning. That's why we consider the reduced folate market a very important market that will grow faster in the next year. Fantastic, Sylvia. Thank you very much. OK, moving on to our next question now, which is what percentage of MTHFR polymorphism is present in specific regions of the world? Um, I think maybe Luca is probably best suited to answer this question. Luca, I'll pass it over to yourself. Sure, a very interesting question. Indeed, um, as I uh, outlined uh, in the presentation, it is not so rare to find people in general uh, with uh, um, a, a defective or like a not not well um, like a variant with a low activity of methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase. Um, overall, in general, we can approximate is like uh, uh, forty percent of the population uh, could have these um, variants, uh, and uh, the fact uh, that is is interesting how from a nutrigenetic point of view, how it developed uh, so widely. I mean, it, it, it is a variant that affects uh, very basic uh, function biologically and poses people at risk. So while uh, natural selection would have uh, um, <clears throat> maintained or selected these variants so frequent, make it not so rare. Um, and the, 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 the answer relies on it's uh, actually uh, on the other side, there is a, a protection from these variants uh, in uh, from certain parasitic uh, uh, infection, for example, from malaria. So it was um, in uh, history or in in, in the centuries, uh, um, being malaria very frequent in several regions in the world, uh, these subjects were like more likely to survive in this environment. Uh, nowadays, we carry on the the the. <clears throat> This imprint or this uh, uh, this selection that has been uh, uh, nowadays, unfortunately, in several parts of the world, is still very important. For, for example, in Europe, is uh, less uh, uh, important, uh, is uh, less uh, <clears throat> impact less uh, malaria, um, and uh, um, but we still have. Uh, 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 of course, it was selected through times, so and we have many p subjects with. Uh, uh, these uh, specific variants. Uh, so in, in general, we have about 50% uh, of women in the uh, Caucasian women, uh, higher in North American Caucasian, Italian and Hispanics. Uh, in Mexico, uh, we can have a percentage of about 35%. And in the north part of China, around 20% of the population. But it's like a, a lot of studies uh, uh, epidemiological studies uh, introduced this like key of interpretation in evaluating the genotype because it's so relevant for the wide uh, 
uh, implication of folate deficiency for health. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's really interesting. Thank you, Luca. Um, I think we have time for one or two more questions now in the session. Uh, this yeah. next question is for Sylvia. So the listener would like to know about the problems or health issues of unmetabolized folic acid. Sylvia, can, maybe you can share some insights with us on that. Yeah, I will uh, answer fast because we saw before in the presentation. So it, it is really related to the question before and they're also related mm -hmm. to the, the answer that uh, Luca gave right now. Uh, it's important to know that in a lot of countries there is, uh, for example, fortification with synthetic folic acid. And by the way, there are a high percentage, for example, if we consider North America, the Hispanic uh, are uh, really uh, um, a population with a high level of uh, methylfolate uh, reductase polymorphism. And so in this kind of population, uh, the, you have a risk that you introduce uh, with the, the diet a lot of folic acid, but you are not able to transform it into the active form. And so it is will increase the level of unmetabolized folic acid in blood. And uh, this is related to some health issue about, for example, uh, interferic in, in, in interaction with the, with the immune system uh, and reduce the immune system capacity. And there are a lot of publications related to this topic. Uh, another aspect is also that uh, folic acid is able to, to, to mask the B12 deficiency and is another point that you have to take in consideration when you have high level of folic acid in blood, you are not able to recognize the B12 deficiency. Mm, okay, very interesting, thank you. Okay, we're gonna take our final question now for today. Um, and the last question is, how do you classify the different generations of folate? Um, who would like to answer that question? Uh, I can take uh, this question if it's okay for you, Luca. I can go ahead. <clears throat> sure, sure. Yeah, I think you are the best in uh, explaining the, this, uh, in recapitulating this concept. Yes. Yeah. But by the way, it's uh, related to to the fact that uh, when we talk about folate, of course, the best option is food. Uh, even if there are uh, a big variability in quantity of folate into food, uh, food folate uh, is the natural form. Uh, but of course, because uh, it's not easy to have the right level of folate, especially in some period or for some kind of population, uh, there was the second generation of folate that was uh, the folic acid that is a synthetic. And you know, as explained uh, in all these uh, webinars today, it's not the active form, so it needs to be metabolized. And there are a lot of uh, things that could reduce this uh, ability to metabolize it into the active form. And then uh, there was the third generation folate, if the first one launched it, if the calcium salt that uh, was uh, the active uh, form of folate. With quatrifolic, we reached the fourth generation with uh, improved uh, stability and uh, especially a high water solubility. That means uh, a better absorption profile and uh, uh, bioavailability profile, of course, uh, with all the safety related uh, guarantee. So the point is that more or less we can uh, list this kind of uh, historical uh, mm, evolution of uh, of uh, of folate that are actually uh, more often called the uh, reduced folate due to the fact that they are the active form that's fantastic sylvia thank you very much for the very insightful and detailed answer so that's about all we have time for today i'd like to thank everyone involved in today's q a session and our speakers for the presentation i'd like to thank our listeners thank for tuning into the webinar which has been brought to you by Genosis by Safra. Before we sign off, I'd also like to let you know that all questions that we didn't have time to answer today can be answered via email. You can also check your inbox for an on-demand version, which will be sent out to you shortly. Finally, you can keep up with the latest developments in industry news at nutritioninsight.com, where you can also sign up to our newsletters. So thank you, everybody, on behalf of everyone today, and have a lovely day.